Hey everyone, we're back here at the 6.5 Summit. It's day three. We're in the modern work and devices track. Very excited for this next conversation, talking to Sateja Perlikar from Salesforce. Sateja, welcome to the 6.5 Summit. This is your first time, right? Yeah, this is my first time. I'm super excited to be here, talk about the future of work and um, get into some of the new trends we've been seeing. Oh my gosh. So let's start there. The new trends we are seeing. Okay, rewind. <laughs> seven months. It's like October, 2022. You playing with a lot of generative AI? Nope. Not even on my radar then. I don't think it was on anyone's radar then. It's pretty amazing, um, isn't it? I mean, I think like maybe there were a few apps that were kind of like doing generative text, like in emails, mm -hmm. but, but we certainly weren't calling it generative AI. No, I think the first time it really hit me was, um, during Thanksgiving last year, I was with um, my husband's family and uh, my brother-in-law was telling me about this new thing, ChatGPT, you've got to check it out. Uh, I'm writing bedtime stories to my kid on it. And it was, it was fascinating, but it didn't hit me at, at yet. And then two weeks later, everything started to explode in our world. Um, yeah, it's it crazy. It, it's so crazy. And, and, and I'll be candid, like, you know, I am a, you know, sort of a global fortune teller. I'm joking, but my job is to kind of look at the future, provide my perspective on it. You know, I've done so many TV spots about generative AI, uh, looking at trend lines. And, and, and the really interesting thing was it did sneak up on me. Now, I went back to like mid last year when people were calling for the doom of technology. And I was very bullish that AI was sort of a trend line that would take us out of somewhat of, of this kind of tech wreck that was going on, at least in the markets, right? Because the thing is, is like productivity, um, you know, driving gains, getting more from less. We've all seen companies are working on a more streamlined manner. Uh, hiring is slowed down. We need to get every employee to be driving uh, meaningful productivity. And AI was such a logical, um, you know, tool to help do that, you know, but you know, I'd, I'd just love to maybe start here by getting your general perspective on, you know, the drivers and barriers with this and all the other sort of big trends that you see in terms of productivity creators. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting when it comes to AI. And I remember when, you know, AI was starting to come up, especially as we were starting to talk about Einstein at Salesforce many, many years ago. And the biggest barrier to adopting technologies like AI was having the data. And obviously, being in the business of CRM data um, at Salesforce, we're very, very connected to our customers about that. But as we started to see generative AI, you know, I mean, this is in the last six months, start to creep up, the, con the concept of uh, conversational data has come up. And that's where, like with Slack, we see this tremendous opportunity or, you know, anywhere that you have conversational data to start to leverage things like generative AI. And you mentioned um, doing more with less. Of course, we get this all the time. How do I do more with less? How do I get my team to be more productive? And generative AI, plus that conversational data you have in a system like Slack, starts to pay off that vision of, oh my gosh, I have this wealth of company information, this corpus of data about my business that is trusted within this wall garden. How can I leverage that to do my job faster? And that's when it gets really interesting. Um, we actually did a, a big announcement recently, Slack GPT, just a few weeks ago, where we've completely uh, evolved our AI strategy uh, with our Slack product to really harness the power of generative AI to make things just faster um, for every, uh, every employee. And so that trend of, well, how do I do more with less? Like productivity gains are just phenomenal when you apply generative AI onto that. Yeah, and I'd love to talk a little bit more about that. You know, there is big productivity gains to be made. And Slack, uh, sorry, you know, Salesforce GPT, Slack GPT is very interesting. You know, I, I have long been a purveyor that Slack has so much more potential than just being a chat. Now, having said that, there's a pretty big continuum out there. There are people, and by the way, Slack has an amazing loyal following. But at the <laughs> same time, there are people in the market that kind of look at Slack as it's the cool, youthful, young, hip, you know, uh, chat that, you know, Salesforce bought. And then there's other people that look at that and say, you know, I, I think Mark Benioff, your CEO, being one of them, saying, no, this is kind of the next digital headquarters. This is going to be the interface that 
people at work are going to interact with to automate tasks, to, to use AI to drive data visibility, to sort of centrally launch meetings and bring productivity together, to share documents and edit things and like um, even build apps, even building apps. And, and yet, you know, at the same time, it's like, I don't think everyone's fully gotten onto that yet. You know, how much do you see this shifting, you know, in this next era? How much is generative AI going to be maybe the, the thing that helps finally break this through so the whole world can see what work is going to look like and where it's going to start? You brought up a really great point. I think the introduction of Slack to many people is through messaging, right? That is the, uh, the first barrier of entry, uh, first part of entry for Slack. But underneath, Slack has a tremendously powerful platform where it's probably one of the only platforms out there that enables end user automation. That means folks like you and I can create our own workflows through point and click. We don't need an admin to do it um, to make our work and our processes go faster. And of course, there's a wealth of capabilities for developers to do uh, to build apps, like you said, or build more sophisticated workflows with external systems, with code or, or no to low code. Um, so there's a big platform that's powering all of this. Uh, and I think a lot of folks don't realize that on a daily basis because they're just interacting with the app, but it's really a productivity platform underneath. Um, and so when you think about layering generative AI on there, the fact that it is an open platform like that allows our partners um, in our ecosystem to build apps on top. So actually, OpenAI and Anthropic were two of our those types of partners which have already built apps to integrate their um, their generative AI technology into Slack. So actually you can, I mean, if you're a Slack uh, customer right now, you can actually download the Cloud app um, from Anthropic. And I believe the ChatGPT app is in beta coming out soon. So these, um, these partners have just been building um, massive innovation on the platform. And we've seen just a massive intake uh, uptick of, I think, over 4,000 now generative AI apps that have been built on the Slack platform. Yeah, super, super interesting, Satasia, is uh, the platform itself, 4,000, like, what do you think are the uh, drivers of adoption? What have been the barriers? I mean, is, you know, one of the things like generative AI is really accelerating is, is you know, language to code, mm -hmm. right? And so I know even low code for less technical people was probably a barrier for really creating apps. But like, I guess I see a future, everything's going to be about aggregation. Mm -hmm. And so like Slack, it sounds like with 4,000 apps and, you know, the, 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 the connectivity to whether it's third party ERPs or first party within Salesforce is that you should be able to almost use Slack as, a, as this very broad aggregation layer to kind of be this work repository. Do you think, you know, something like generative AI's capability to generate code or to take language to app is going to be a, a you know, a driver to speed the adoption and, and speed the utilization of, of the bigger capability sets? Absolutely. I mean, the just the use cases that our customers are coming up with are amazing. And obviously, a lot of this is in the works. We just announced our next generation platform, which is AI ready. So we'll be able to now um, bring generative AI apps into, say, a workflow. So a really great example of this is if you're uh, building a workflow to let's let's I'm a marketer. So, you know, my team writes a lot of content. If we want to start generating drafts of content, we could build a workflow that prompts us to say, hey, what are the main points and data points we want to put in this post or this piece of content, it'll prompt us and then I'll call out to say chat GPT and then spit out a draft that we can then get going with. Um, so that's a workflow that I could build without code just by plugging in the right applications and the right um, data sets. Now take that and, and, and that's just, you know, today you could do that. Fast forward six months and the fact that generative AI is a being able to not just generate content, but code, help us with web development, help us um, with app development, that's going to be huge. And then I think about how Slack ends up being that engagement layer across all, you know, your CRM data, your backend data, um, you know, other systems in your, uh, in your company, just bringing it all together into one place. And it's the place you're having conversations. 
the conversational data set there is just huge for companies. So really, you know, sky's the limit. It's uh, we're just finding new use cases for this every day. It's it's a little overwhelming, but it's really exciting. Well, it certainly has the potential Stasia, to be a really big growth driver. Can I I want to pivot as we sort of wind down this conversation and talk a little bit about hybrid work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for a long time, you know, we saw this massive digital transformation wave. Initially, it was fueled by, you know, the unfortunate pandemic circumstances. We got to a point as a society where we said, we may never go back into the office again. And, and it was like, you know, for the first several months after we had seen most of the uh, rules loosen up for mobility for people and workers. Um, and now you're starting to see some companies are mandating back to office. Some companies are going to three-day policies in the office. Some companies remain steadfast that remote and work anywhere are the best. Slack is, for instance, one of the great enablers. It was one of the great enablers that helped companies. But kind of just, I guess, it, as it pertains to the future of work and you as a, you know, an industry leader, just kind of how do you see that playing out? How do you see work um, shifting in the next few years? You know, with all the live events, are we, are we going to just end up back to normal? Is it just going to be like it was in 19 with cooler tools? Or do you think some of what happened over the last few years is going to be more permanent? You know, it's interesting. Um, I live in San Francisco and, um, you know, you can feel the change from before the pandemic, during the pandemic, being in a major city. And now, you know, what it looks like today is just a, it's a bit of that hybrid, like you said. Um, there's a lot of folks going into the office, but there's also a lot of uh, a lot of workers that are at home. And I think with just the shift, it, it really just depends um, on the company and your appetite. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of thought of like that connection. And I think Sam, Alt Alt Sam Altman had a great interview recently where he was talking about the connection that fueled a lot of the startup culture, um, you know, five, 10 years ago and how we need to get back together to regain it. Now, I don't know that going back into the office every single day you know, punching in and out is that connection, but that concept of in-person connection with other humans, I think really, um, it, we really missed out on that during the pandemic. So I, you know, every CEO is going to have their own opinion of, you know, where, how much they want their, um, their teams to come in, what makes sense, but the concept of human connection coupled by enabling work to get done, no matter where you are, I think is going to be the big driver. And obviously I'm things like automation and generative AI play a big role, but you know, it, something that we really uh, value at Salesforce is being able to connect with our customers directly, whether it's in an office at, you know, a, a, a meeting with our customers or going on site and something like live events, you know, we've gone full force and brought our live events back. It just brings so much joy to actually be able to interact with your customers and have that human connection versus, you know, in pocket. So I think there's just going to be, it's going to be different. You know, we're going to be connecting live for some things, but things like this, where we're able to connect virtually a much easier than, you know, taking a flight across and have a great conversation. Um, I think we're going to see more of that too, but it's just going to expand the choice and the flexibility. And um, actually something that you brought to mind was we just did completed our state of work report uh, for 2023, where we surveyed about um, 18,000 knowledge workers. So anyone that is, you know, logging in and, and uh, employees of various companies and flexibility rather than, you know, remote versus hybrid versus in-person, the concept of flexibility was the biggest trend there in terms of the future of work. Um, being able to be flexible on how to get your job done, whether it is traveling to another state to see a customer or being able to log on and, you know, manage your, your day based on your family schedule. Yeah, no, I think I think you bring up some really good points. And I think that's the whole, you know, continuum, Satasia, of how we perceive, implement, utilize, and then evolve with different technologies. And And I'll say like collaboration, it was sort of a, you know, we got forced to move very quickly. And then as we've sort of figured out work patterns, then you see something like generative AI and you're like, wow, look how quickly something can get done. And, you know, there's been a lot of debate um, recently because you're kind of weighing between more efficient productivity, 
meaning doing the same amount of work with less. And then there's also the opportunity where, where it's like, we can do 10 times more with the same or a little bit more. And I think that's one of the big things that we're gonna be debating for some time is how much more productive can we be? And, and just like content, for instance, you're in marketing, I'm in I'm a research company, you know, I now do things like dictate my thoughts after a new product launch, and then I will have a generative tool organize my thoughts into a blog. And then I'll use something like gr Grammarly or something like a tool to clean it up. And I just took, you know, something that might've used historically been a two hour uh, activity and taking it down to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so that means in that same time, maybe you could do six, seven, eight of that content. And it's like, wow. And so I, I guess one of the big things, and maybe this is a good place to end is just kind of your take on where does it, lead as a whole and how do we get society to to see the positive because i think there's so much positive and while we have a lot to learn there's going to be security there's going to be um risks there's going to be uh displaced work that's going to likely be augmented with new work but you know it's more positive than it is bad right i mean there's so much good in what's being built that's going to help companies and people do mm -hmm. more interesting things mm -hmm. i mean it's a it's a generational a huge technological shift, right? That we probably haven't seen for a few years. Um, the rate of technology is moving so fast. Just a few years is a long time these days. And the the shift with generative AI is so interesting in that some of those use cases, like you mentioned, right? Like it's something that may have taken you many hours is now taking you maybe 20 minutes and uh, you know an hour and how much more productive can we get? And it's it's a combination sometimes I think about like what are the administrative administrative tasks that we were doing before? Like the promise of this is something that gets me very excited after we have a meeting, not having to transcribe my notes. I'm an old school, like I, I write notes with in a notebook with a pen, <laughs> not having to transcribe those and read them out into, you know, to the group. Something it's already done for me. The action items are taken. They're already posted, say in a channel or wherever, you know, whatever uh, tool you're using, say with Slack, it's in a channel. Um, and you can get on with your day after a meeting. You don't have to do that administrative task and it just makes things work faster. But also there's the, the concept of there's a, still a human involved and there's still trusted and secure. It's within the walls of your you know, organization. Like those two things I think are really important to keep in mind of how we start to make people more uh, comfortable with this technology is to create some of those safeguards, those best practices, those guidelines to ensure that this technology is used in the right way um, and give that confidence, right? With any technology, it's scary, um, but with the right guidelines, the right best practices and trust, um, starting to build that confidence to make people more comfortable. That's a great way to end, Satasia. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time not getting on a plane, but I know you would if I'd have asked. <laughs> uh, Next time uh, I come to San Francisco, I look forward to coming by Salesforce Tower and spending some time. Meanwhile, have a great day. Thanks for joining the 6.5 Summit. Look forward to having you back next year. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. All right. There you have it, everybody. For the 6.5 Summit, I'm Daniel Newman. This is day three. We are in the Modern Work and Devices track. Stick with us. More to come.